All right, so you know, uh, can I just say one thing? The yeah. other night in Philadelphia, yeah. Lurch uh, is standing there with a buddy of ours, Andy McVeigh, yep. uh, while Phil and I were so doing funny. our stand-up open, and I look over, and Lurch is basically pulling his pants down trying to make me laugh. It was just uh, <laughs> it brought me back to, like, my first job in TV, but I enjoyed so it. Great. Hey, we're nothing if not professional <laughs> we, here, Buck. I was just trying to get a reaction. Uh, Buck, it was, I, I think it was more Andy than me, but it, it was pretty comical. <laughs> Buck, did you hear where Lurch... Sight when I looked up and saw these two, I can tell you that. Yeah. Buck, did you hear where Lurch went before the game as he was looking for bars told, in Center City? I told Buck. Where were you Remember, again? We, I, I mistakenly walked into a gay bar. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm They're telling great. you. Did you follow, I listened to you tell some of that story. Did you follow a chick in there? Saw, no, I, just saw, I saw a chick like sitting in a window. And you said, oh, this said, is a good this, spot. This is the spot. Walked in there. She was the only girl in the bar. <laughs> She might not even been a girl. Well, she was hot. Whatever, <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hysterical. <laughs> All right, so so Buck, we haven't talked to you since the trade. Uh, kind of big news on paper. It seems to be a, a great move. Everyone seemed to like it. Did, were you were you a fan of it? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, Phil and I have been watching this guy for two years, and he's a great shooter. I mean, he you know every time he touched the ball somewhere or you know around three point line he was knocking it down and we started to see that I think the other night uh, against Utah we saw him hit a, a shot or two and he'll do that on a consistent basis and he's a pretty good scorer too I mean he just he's aggressive and he's a good player so uh, I like the trade you know they basically gave up two guys that weren't playing which is you know uh, unfortunate that they weren't contributing but they didn't do much and then the draft pick which uh, I know Ernie feels like McCullough will end up being, you know, the draft pick, uh, a guy that was taken in the first round even though he had a, a torn knee. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully he'll develop and he'll be a good player. But, uh, yeah, I like the trade. And it's going to take a little time to get some, some chemistry, you know, with him in there because uh, they're bringing him off the bench now, obviously, and not Jason Smith as much. And they're bringing Jan Mahinmi off and trying to work him into it. So, uh it's going to take, I think, a little time with the chemistry, as it did at the beginning of the season when they started out poorly and there was no chemistry, and all of a sudden it gelled. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about it. You mentioned Jason Smith. So Jason Smith, really probably the second-best guy off the bench for this team this year, and all of a sudden his minutes are being gobbled up by Bogdanovich. Is there a possibility where they go maybe a little bit bigger and go with Ubre, Bogdanovich, Smith, and Mahimi together? Well, sure. I mean, that's the challenge that Scott Brooks is going to have to face. He, he's got to figure out ways to get all of these guys' minutes, which is not easy, obviously. Uh, but he's got to try to figure out ways not to just get them minutes, but to get them, you know, a quality minutes, minutes where they're, the chemistry is there with these guys. Uh, they were, you're right, they were starting to see that with Jason Smith. I mean, he, the, the whole bench was unproductive at the beginning of the season, and then all of a sudden during that run they were very productive or at least much more productive or uh, contributing, and Jason Smith was one of those guys. I mean, he came in the other night in Philly. I think he blocked two shots right away. Way. Hmm. So um, they've got to find a way to be able to, to filter those guys in to where they're not just getting minutes, but they're getting productive minutes, and um, hopefully they'll be able to do that. All right, what about the need for a backup point guard? Everybody's kind of known that they really need somebody to step up. You would think maybe Burke would be the guy, but I know he's really getting pressured on the ball. That's not necessarily his thing. Mm -hmm. Brandon Jennings is a name that's out there that, that yep. could be intriguing. What, what do you envision for the Wiz? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I was watching some of the Knicks broadcast last night, and uh, Mike Breen was talking about the fact that they were kind of surprised that uh, Jennings was let go, uh, mm -hmm. although there was apparently a little friction with him and Jackson where he didn't want to play the triangle offense and what have you. He just he just wanted to get out there and play, not necessarily play the way they wanted him to. Uh, he's a very explosive player, as we know, uh, and he can really push the ball up the court. Um, I think what you have to be a little bit wary of is is what they were saying, because you're not going to take minutes away from John Wall, and right. you're not going to supplant him and, and whatever. Uh, but having said that, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to having a guy like him on the team. I mean, he's he's a heck of a player, and he gets the ball up the court in the same in the same fashion that the Wizards like to do when Wall's in the game. So uh, we'll see how that pans out. Now, I know there are peaks and valleys, Buck, in, in the games or in the season. And, uh, you know, Wizards fans were certainly spoiled over the last two months the way they played. But the Philly game, uh, and we talked about it, they, they were great offensively, but T.J. McConnell did whatever he wanted 
uh, Rodriguez or whatever that guy's name. He did whatever he wanted in terms of penetration. Uh, Covington was dropping threes like he was Larry Bird. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was just no defensive urgency in that game. You can't lose to the Sixers without Embiid. That's my opinion. Yeah. And then the Utah game, Utah's good. I mean, Utah's going to the playoffs. They're like a fourth yep. seed in the West. But, um, you know, that's a home game. There wasn't any urgency there. So a little bit of a bump in the road here over the last yeah. couple of games. I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, the Philly game was disappointing to me. It's the third time this year that the Wizards have played them without Joel Embiid, and they've lost twice. Um, uh, but Philly's a scrappy team. We saw that, so they're scrappy. But you, you, you shouldn't, as well as the Wizards have been playing, you shouldn't lose to that team. You can't allow them uh, to score 120. No, and if you score 112, right, you know, score 112, as Scott Brooks says, you should win. Uh, so, yeah, the, you can't give them 120 points. And then the Utah game, the, they're really good defensively, obviously, and, 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 and Gordon Hayward is probably just the most underrated player in the league.